Hey there, welcome to day one, chapter one of our Galatians Bible Challenge. I am Gwen Smith, and I'm excited that you've joined me and, and women from all around the world to read the book of Galatians together. We are gonna do six chapters in six days. We're gonna have an amazing time, and we have a very specific goal, and that is that this would help you think big thoughts about God uh, by getting into His Word. And I really believe that this book will encourage you um, and equip you to live fully in both His grace and in His truth. So I hope you had an awesome time in chapter one of Galatians. If you have not taken the time to read the chapter yet, I want you to go to stop the video and go read it right now, then restart the video from here, and we'll just discuss a little bit. But each day uh, when you open up the chapter, I want you to do four things. I want you to read the chapter through, and again, you can do a literal translation, you can do a paraphrase, you can do both. Uh, just read it, and then I want you to record things, get out your journal, just write down the things that you observe, who, what, why, when, where, anything that you think would be um, important for you to remember, and then I want you to reflect. This is huge. This is where it gets all personal and all up in your business. I want you to take time to reflect. Um, what, how can this apply to your life? Why does it matter? Um, and just really be, um, allow it to really invade your heart. And then I want you to take time to respond to God personally, intimately, respond to Him in worship, uh, just personal prayer time. And then I want us to respond one to another, to encourage each other, to share our favorite verses, to go public with it on social media, to take it to the streets and to allow the word of God to impact not only our hearts, but the hearts of all the people around us. So let me just tell you, um, we're going to be pretty chill. I'm just sitting in my office and I took notes. I started, I started off with a, a green pen that did not show up well and end up with a pink pen. And I don't know about you, but I like pens. So I'm just going to kind of go over with you some of the things that I thought were really cool um, that really challenged me. So grab your Bible and your journal and let's get started. So chapter one, not very long, totally doable, right? I love that it starts off with Paul identifying himself as the author, but he says right away, I'm not sent by man, I'm sent by Jesus. I'm sent by God the Father who, who raised him from the dead. And he's making this de declaration of, listen, I am qualified to talk because this is not about those around me. This is about the one of all power um, who sent me. And that should be our, our perspective when we're going and mobilizing our lives on behalf of the Lord. Um, I, it reminded me of Isaiah chapter 6 when the prophet Isaiah had this encounter in the holy chambers of God's presence and his response was to just take a personal inventory and say, I am nothing, Lord, in, in, in response to who you are. And, and it's, the Bible tells us that he became undone in the presence of God. And, um, and you know what? That's, the word, that's what the Word of God does. Um, it recalibrates my heart so often and just reminds me, listen, without God, none of this matters. We are not sent by man to do good works. We are sent by God, by Jesus Christ, the one who conquered death. And I love how Paul brings that to our heart right, right at the beginning. He's saying, I am qualified to talk because I am sent by the one. And he is the one who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I mean, our hope is not in the death of Christ. It is in the death and resurrection of Christ. Our hope is rooted in the fact that death was conquered and that life, is what rose in, in the empty grave. And, and I love because Jesus declared himself to Martha um, in, in Bethany when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. That is who our hope is rooted in. That is the one who, who mobilizes us and commissions us, just like Paul. So I loved that, wrote that down. Then I love in verse three where Paul establishes his agenda as being led by both grace and peace. Oh, may we all establish the agenda of everything we, we look to communicate and, um, and do in the workplace, in our homes, in our relationships, 
as being led by the grace and the peace of God. That's a challenge. That's a reminder. I made note of it. Kind of makes me stick, sit up a, a little bit straighter and pray a little bit more fervently. Lord, lead. Um, because I love to lead. Um, anyway, I know that you're tracking with me on that. But it also, uh, I also took note of the fact that Paul references the sacrifice of Christ and says it was according to the will of God the Father. And it was so that he would be glorified in those verses of uh, 4 and 5. And that just reminded me, and I wrote down some notes, that um, Christ's death, his death, the worst thing he ever had to go through, was according to the will of God the Father in order to accomplish his glory. And this is one of those difficult messages, but it's true in our lives as well. We will go through difficult times and challenging circumstances according to the will of God the Father. He allows difficult things in our lives um, so that he can be brought glory in and through us. It's sobering, it's challenging, and yet it's truth. It's truth and it's consistent through the word of God. Jesus himself said, you will have um, challenges in this world, but but I've overcome it, so be encouraged. And and then, I mean, we go on to see where in the book of James, the brother of Jesus says, consider it pure joy when you face trials and tribulations of many kinds, um, because God will work that out to establish our hope and perseverance and, and bring glory to himself. So that just kind of resonated with my heart, just a reminder that, that Christ went through difficult, difficult things according to the will of God um, for his glory, and, and we will too. Then Paul goes on to talk about the fact that there is no other gospel. It is grace by the finished work of Jesus Christ, and that anyone who would lead us in any other manner, uh, basically he speaks really boldly to this, um, let them be eternally condemned. That is not the way we talk, and it seems so strong and so so brazen, and yet this is very serious stuff, and Paul takes it to the point where he even says it twice. So these type of uh, verses really need to remind us that the gospel is to be preserved and protected by the believers. We need to cling tightly to the word of God, not try to to, um, to rework it, to accommodate our society or um, our, you know, or to our comforts. We have to be true to the Word of God. And, and then verse 10, if I'm going to journal anything, which I did, um, is my verse to remember from chapter 1. It is the biggest challenge, and it reminds us not to be people pleasers. It says um, in, in verse 10, and I now trying to win the, oh, am I, is the question. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Come on. <laughs> is that so true? I mean, ladies, it is very difficult for us. It's so easy to get distracted um, from, by people and, by the longing and desire for us to please those who we work for, who we hang out with, who we live with, the ones we love. The most important thing that we can do is please the Lord. So that's a great reminder. I'm gonna definitely tuck that verse away in my journal. Then Paul establishes the fact that the, the gospel that he delivers and the gospel that we read about in the Bible is the truth and it is received by revelation of Jesus Christ. It is not something that man made up. Ladies, this is truth. It is overwhelmingly incredible. It is complicated. It is humbling. It is encouraging, but it is truth. It is hard. It is best. It is incredible, incredible again, but literally that's so important for us to remember that the word of God is truth. And then that whole next section, um, I really thought was interesting when Paul in, in verse 13 says, For you've heard of my previous way of life in J Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing Judaism beyond 
many Jews of my own age, and I was extremely zealous for the tradition of my fathers. But when God, he says, who set me apart from birth, and I love that, and I'm going to come right back around to that. But God, who set me apart from birth and who called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not consult any man. He reminded us that we are not to go to the phone. We are to go to the throne whenever we're, we're grappling with any type of um, challenge or or, or heart matter. And so I just, I, in my notes, put on the side of my Bible, thank you, God, that, that you set me apart from birth. And thank you, God, that you called me by your grace to know you and to know the revelation of your good news. And thank you, God, that in you and because of grace, you call me to tell the world, just like Paul says that he's told to preach. We, we might not like the word, the word preach, but we're, we're called to live it, to live it. And that's by God, and that's all believers. And then he sums up and finishes off that, the chapter with um, that thought of what I'm writing to you. is, is This is truth. He, he comes back around to that. But I love what he says. He said um, in verse 22, I was, later I went to Syria and Cecilia. He's kind of recapping his journey. And he said, and I, they didn't know me. He said, I was personally unknown to the church of Judea that are in Christ. They had only heard a report. The man who had formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith that he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. That right there is a statement of the power of a changed life. What does your life say about God and his ability to transform? I can tell you that I thought about that and I was like, look, I am a woman who formally rejected God's ways for, for my life and, and chose my own path and who chose death for my first child through abortion, but that does not define me. That is who I was. I am now the woman who is made clean by the grace of God, who is forgiven, who, who is experiencing the freedom, the joy, and the love of Christ. And because I can stand here as a woman who has been transformed, my prayer is that others would then in turn praise God because of it, because of the testimony, the power of his transformation. Where is that in your life? Are you living in such a way that would show the transformation? I was this, but, but God, God met me there. He cleaned up my mess and he has made a change in me. That's what we're called to. I love it. We need to be God pleasers, not man pleasers. We need to live in such a way that our lives would cause others to wonder about this incredible, transforming God that we serve. I hope you loved chapter one as much as I did. And now that I've shared a few things from my heart, I want to hear from you. So below the video, would you drop a note? Would you... Um, type out the verse that you that really you know struck you today or just a thought or a concept that maybe the Lord invoked in your heart. Now go public with it. All right, let's do that. Um, tweet it out, post it on Facebook. Um, this is on Pinterest as well. So find us there, share it, pin it. Uh, if you're on Twitter, uh, use hashtag Galatians. And let's just share, let's encourage one another, but let's live in such a way that we reflect this God who is full of grace, who transforms lives, and who longs for us to look to him um, in all of our choices. Thank you so much for joining me on day one of our Galatians challenge, and I will see you tomorrow as we go open chapter two.